you guys, welcome back to my channel. I asked you over on my Instagram to ask me anything. I said, nothing's off limits, send me your questions. Got a whole bunch of things. So we're gonna kind of start with just like me, questions that aren't necessarily mom related and then get into the mom stuff too. Cause I got a pretty good mix of both. Let's get to it. Okay, so how did you meet Alec? We went to college together and we were in macroeconomics together. Started school in Seattle. I got the opportunity to be a princess in Disneyland, so I moved and I was sitting next to this guy in my macroeconomics class. I switched from nursing to business for one semester, so I had to take macroeconomics. And that is where I met Alec. Uh, apart from Instagram and YouTube, what do you do for a living? This is all I do. Um, my husband, he is a financial advisor. Um, I was a marketing manager for a nonprofit and I've done a handful of random jobs. I used to be a princess at Disneyland. I did that for about five years. Then I worked for Kylie Jenner at Kylie Cosmetics. Another question in here is, would you ever want to go back to work? No, I love being a stay-at-home mom. I like what I do here with social. I feel like I share um, an, an amount that I'm comfortable with and that's feasible for our, our schedules and everything. But no, I don't see myself going back to traditional um, work at this time or anytime soon. Is it hard for you to share on social and have people you know or knew watch you or have them judge you? Yeah, it's funny, I'm almost 29 and I still think about like people from high school like watching my stuff. Like why on earth do would they care? Like, I don't care what other people do. Why do they care about me? It's more just the strangers, especially like weird comments or DMs. You know, I'm really protective over my kids and like Harper being a little girl, um, not wanting to overshare things with her. And sometimes you just get weird stuff or of course people being mean to, to me. I know that is just a part, uh, a piece of the puzzle of sharing so much on social media. I do not think it makes it okay. I once in a while really try to put people on blast to hold them accountable. I've been posting now for about six years. I started my YouTube six years ago. You get mean comments ever since then. So I just have a tough skin. I'm just more of a tough person in general. So I don't know, I go through waves. There's seasons where I'm literally, like I'm about to like delete everything, you know? And then sometimes I just really get on a roll and I'm like, haters aren't gonna bring me down. You do have to have a tough skin though. You have to just know people are gonna say stuff and it means nothing. They don't know you, okay? Like you think I'm a, a bad mom you think like my kids are ugly okay <laughs> thank you for letting me know bye love your feed but why do you promote consumerism so much this is super interesting to me i don't feel like i do necessarily but i would assume you're talking about links that i share um twofold part one is i make money most of the time through links and i don't work besides this so when you buy things from my links um, and I get sometimes it's literally like six cents, you guys. But sometimes, you know, if you buy a big piece of furniture or like one of my strollers, it's like, you know, 20 or 30 bucks a piece. So that adds up and that's really helpful. So that's why I like to share links, part one for me. Part two, I buy so much of our life through other influencers' links because if I'm gonna buy something, I like to know it's been tried tested it's true it's recommended to me if i'm looking for a specific outfit for the twins and like i follow different influencers and they share you know well here's what i would dress my kids in for disney world and i think it's cute that's super helpful to me because i don't have to take my little free time to go find that stuff so i try to do that for my followers as well so i'm not trying to promote consumerism it's really truly to be helpful to you and part three I get a lot of DMs asking for links and if I see multiple people asking for th like the same thing, it's easier just to share it on my stories if I see like, okay, this is something some people are interested in. I'll just share it on my story. Have you ever considered plastic surgery? If so, what? Um, I have had a nose job and I have a chin implant. I've talked about this on my Instagram before. Um, yeah, just it's really mild. Even my nose, I wish it was a little bit smaller. I don't think it's an enough of an annoyance to get a revision after already going under. Like I wish it turned out a little bit smaller because it was really minimal to begin with. So 
the results were really minimal. That was when I was 18 years old I did that. So now I'm almost 29, so it's been 11 years. Um, I have no problem with plastic surgery. I don't have any plans to do anything. I have no filler, no Botox, none of that yet. Not against it, but um, that's where I'm at right now. As a Christian woman, what are your views on feminism? Hmm, interesting. I think if a woman and a man are doing the same job, they should be paid equally. Just because you're a woman does not mean you are less capable or should be paid less. As far as like um, husband and wife roles, I am a Christian, I follow the Bible. I think in a marriage, the husband and wife are partners. I do not feel like I am responsible for more in our home than Alec is. I think we have God-given gifts. Like I do think there are things as a woman and an individual, obviously, but there's things women are generally better at than men and vice versa. I don't want to do manual labor. Alec can do that. Like if he wants to go do hard labor outside and I clean the house, that's fine. But I view that as being like partners in our home and being partners in parenthood, um, not necessarily like these are our traditional roles. I am thankful that whether it's tr a traditional role to you or not, that I'm able to stay home with the kids and he's able to go to work. If I was making like a million dollars at a job that I didn't want to quit, maybe I'd go to work and he'd stay home with them. We're not in that situation. It makes more sense for us to live the life we are living right now, but you do what you are good at and what you feel called to. If your husband loves to clean the house, let him. Great, that's awesome. If you love to like go chop wood and do the yard work, go for it. I love mowing the lawn. I think it's like therapeutic to watch like the aesthetic lines of the grass come through. So I don't think it's like anti-feminist or anti-Christian to have those views. Lots of questions about more kids, like a ton of these. Um, I don't know. I always wanted to, but I didn't think I would have twins. Um, so the idea of being one and done, I actually don't like. I like wanted the older sibling and younger sibling dynamic and to reuse our favorite clothes and these nice baby items we were gifted. I feel like light, I feel like our world is set up for families of four, like amusement parks and cars to like sit comfortably. And like, it just makes sense that we each kind of have a kid, but, uh, I don't know. I don't want to get too far along with the twins though, where they start to be potty trained and out of, you know, changing out of strollers and things just to go back again. Um, but I don't think if we had more, we would not want more than three. So then like, you don't want the gap to get too big where it's like the twins and then one who's kind of left out because they're too young to hang with the twins. So it's definitely a topic of conversation for us, but I don't know. I don't, I don't feel good either way, honestly. Okay, let's move into baby questions now. Not as many, and a lot of them are similar. Okay, how to make it to church on time. Okay, whether it's church or a dinner, wherever we need to go, I feel like I usually start about an hour before we need to leave. I'll get myself dressed first, put together. They can kind of hang out in the room or bathroom while I'm getting ready. Once I'm ready, I get them dressed, then I let them kind of play or I'll put on a show a lot of the time if we're like pressed, starting to get pressed for time. Um, so they can just stay occupied, calm watching a show while I gather snacks and um, water bottles, pacifiers. Um, you know, I kind of have a gathering spot on the counter or table that I put all that stuff and then I'll do a diaper change right before we leave. Socks and shoes, go. I feel pretty good actually at being on time for things considering we have twin toddlers. Do the twins do their own conversations? Not really. They'll like make noises, but I don't feel like I've been like, they're talking to each other. When do you plan on potty training the twins? Best advice it seems like out there is wait till you know they're ready. So I'm not in a rush. I have no plan. Two and a half, I don't know, is that like normal? By three? <laughs> they're only 20 months old almost. So um, I'm not in a rush, but I should probably do a little bit more research. How much sleep do I get? I guess that's more of a me question, but um, I feel like I get a good amount of sleep. They really almost always sleep through the night, like 85% of the time. Um, sometimes they wake up around like 11.30 or midnight. They just 
cry a little and need to be like held and, and they go back to sleep. I usually go to bed around like 10.30 to 11 and then I'm up around like seven or eight. When did you feel like you could handle the twins alone, struggling to find a flow? Ugh, super tough. That's a great question. Zero to six months was really tough for me. It was just a constant battle of getting comfortable and then things change over and over again, over and over again. That was definitely tough. I feel like it took me six months to really feel like I got my feet on the ground. As far as handling them alone, maybe like at that point or like nine months, Alec works from home. So he was always kind of there, which is so nice. I can't remember like when he, he would leave. I mean, he would do little things like go golf for an afternoon. It's still hard <laughs> because I'm used to having him here all the time, which I'm so thankful for. Um, I think that is gonna change soon, which is okay because I have my own flow too. Um, he went to New York for a week for a work thing and I had the twins alone for a week and that was at a year old. And by the end of the week, like we were in such a flow, such a good rhythm. Alec came back, I'm like, you are disrupting <laughs> what I have created. <laughs> also, I will say this, like kind of what I was just saying about Alec, there's something about just being alone with them that changes your whole mindset. Like when Alec is here, it's like, okay, I know he's here. Like I don't, I can be kind of like half in, half out. Like if I need him, he can take care of them. If I need a break, whatever. So it almost makes me like get more frustrated, I feel like with them or with Alec. Cause I'm like, you step in, you can hear them crying. You take care of them. Cause I'm obviously like stressed. When it's just you taking care of them, I, for me at least, I feel like literally a different part of my brain starts working. Um, there's no option. Like you are the only one there to take care of them. So th there's just no option. You just do it versus having someone there where you're kind of bouncing the responsibility, you know, bouncing, bouncing it off them. So you can do it. If you wanted one more, do you know if you could get pregnant naturally? That's a super good question because if you followed my story, um, we didn't do anything crazy, but my eggs weren't growing big enough to ovulate. So I had to take um, a few days of letrozole pills, which make your eggs grow big enough. And that resulted in two eggs growing, which is uncommon, 4% chance of multiples with letrozole. Um, but uh, that's how I had to do it. I have no idea. I've talked to my doctor about it. If we did want to have more kids and we're struggling, the window, she said like give it three months and then I could do that protocol again versus last time. I think we had been trying like nine months before we went to get any help. Definitely an option, but I have no clue what that would look like if we go that route. How do you keep your sanity with twins? Asking for a friend, got it. I think it's kind of what I was saying before where like, you have to, you have, there's no option. You can't lose your mind, you know? Um, but if we're being a little less serious than like actually going crazy, uh, even though it feels like that sometimes, just try to be really intentional with your you time. If I spend nap time on my phone versus reading a book or doing a crossword puzzle or getting cleaning done, I feel really different. Um, the phone is so mindless and it goes really quick you can spend an hour watching Instagram reels and it feels like 20 minutes. So being really intentional with your alone time is good. And then just keeping a really healthy attitude when you are with them. Some days are so hard. Like some days you don't keep your sanity. You're just minute by minute getting to bedtime. That's okay. But just remember like your child is not trying to be an inconvenience to you. They're not trying to irritate you, at least at this age. <laughs> um, they need something or they want to be comforted by you. You are their comfort. You are where they feel safe or where you're the one who provides them their needs. Just remembering that in those moments where you're like feeling so heated and so tapped out and it's really okay to put on a movie. I tried to have a really healthy balance of screen time. I do not plop them down in front of the TV and dip out for an hour, but sometimes you really need that 15, 20 minutes. Give yourself a little peace. Don't let yourself go crazy. That is no good to them if you are not available and you know in a healthy space to be a mom to your kids. <laughs> what was your schedule with the twins at one month at night? I have a video um, of our nighttime routine for us. There is no schedule at one month. I was up when they were up. I would wake them both up though to feed at that point. Still, um, 
to keep them on the same schedule. So that is what's gonna be best for your sanity is keeping them on the same schedule while they are at that young age. Does your husband ever watch the twins on his own? Yeah, he does a lot. I do mops every other week, like a mom's group through um, a local church, which is great. I've made a lot of mom friends through that. You don't have to be a Christian to join. Um, it's just a really good way to meet other moms. They're all over the world. So you can just look up mops and see if there's one near you. Yeah, if I need a girl stay, I go out to lunch with my mom, go over to a friend's house for a couple hours without the twins. I'll watch him. He's totally fine with them. What's so been the hardest age so far with the twins? The zero to six months has been hard. This season lately, like almost 20 months, is getting pretty tough because they're doing the emotions um, and they don't know what they're feeling. How to express what they're feeling. Um, they get angry and they've been hitting each other a lot. If Hudson takes one of Harper's toys, she will hit him. Hudson, if he like runs out of milk in his bottle and he wasn't done, he'll throw it against the wall and scream. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> like what is going on? So this season has uh, turned a corner for us, but it's different. It's not just like, oh my gosh, I'm busy. They're all over the place. It's like, oh, now we have to like, talk about discipline and like emotions and it's more of a mental mental game for ya. Okay, almost done here. How can you look so gorgeous while having twins? I can't even brush my hair. <laughs> okay, I have days that I look like a rat and I just don't show my face on social media. But since the twins have been born, I put makeup on because it makes me feel better about myself most days. Um, if the twins are napping, I try to take a shower then if I'm not able to in the morning and try to shower, just do it. Like, I, I don't know why it's like a badge of motherhood to be like, I don't know the last time I showered. It's like, I know things get hard, but take a shower. They sleep, they sleep a lot. Just jump in the shower. I know it's so cliche, but like you can go so long without doing anything for yourself. And all of a sudden you feel like, when was the last time I did anything at all for me? And I know you that like when you become a mom, you do have to surrender to that. There's just responsibilities and financial burdens and just things that become way more of a priority than a pedicure. But once in a blue moon, whatever it is for you, whatever, like take a nap, get your hair done, eyelashes, take a nice extended shower. You know what I mean? Like just the long deep conditioner, body scrub shower. Do it for yourself. It's cliche and I rolled my eyes at it for a long time. I'm like, I don't need to do that. I am a mom. I have to be a mom. You have to be a mom, which means you have to be able to show up the best you possibly can. So do what you gotta do. Hire a babysitter, have a mom, mother-in-law, cousin come over for an hour. So you can just lay in your bed and read a book for an hour, like whatever it is, <laughs> do it. Okay, wow, I've been talking so long. I'm gonna have to really, edit all this down because I've been talking for like 45 minutes. You guys just sent me so many good questions. You got me so fired up, but I hope this was helpful to you. I appreciate you all so much and I will see you on the next one. Bye.